My name is Amy Barrett Daffin, and today I'm here with Barbara Brackman, and Barbara Brackman is going to talk to us about her newest book, Divided Hearts, A Civil War Friendship Quilt. So welcome, Barbara. Well, thank you, Amy. So Barbara, um, tell me about, uh, you have been a Civil War historian for a long time, um, and you've written many books about the Civil War and quilt and how they relate to quilts, and you've done books on fabric. So tell me about Divided Hearts. No, I'm fascinated by the Civil War era, and it's just amazing how many links I can find to quilts in the Civil War era. When it was first suggested that I look into that, I, thought, well, I don't think so, but it's been like 20 years, and I still find quilts that have a link. But I was most interested, so this started because I was interested in a quilt that was in, it's in South Carolina. And the signatures on it come from Charleston and New York City. Now um, what, and this is pre-Civil War, and to Bellum Album, what would those women have in common? They, now they might be cousins, and some of them were. But that's sort of what started me on this. Why would there be a connection in 1855, five years before a war broke out? So this the, the new book is a pieced album, and I took the most popular blocks from that era. So some of the favorites, the chimney sweep and the, and the waggies chase and things that people use to sign their names. And I also found some that we would never think of as an album, but they loved them. So I picked 12 blocks, and I have a blog, and I have, I don't sew, and, or much, and, but I have many loyal readers, and they made all the blocks. And we had to pick and choose because we had some to choose from. So over a year, about two years ago, we did a block of the month with these blocks. And uh, my job is to tell the stories. And I love doing the research. So that's how it started. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, I was looking through the book, and I think one of the things – I love, because I'm a huge history buff, I love history, is all the ephemera that you have. You've got the photographs and the stories and the illustrations, and um, you get the pictures of the quilts. So do you have like a huge collection of ephemera? Nope. <laughs> I have a very, I'm very good at the internet though. And you know, I try to put all that ephemera up there because a lot of the readers are from France and Russia and other places and know nothing, but they're interested in the Civil War and of course quilts. So whenever I talk about a woman, I want to show them where she lived because they don't have any idea what a little town in the United States might look like in 1950 or a big palatial southern mansion. But I get most of these public domain. The Library of Congress is my favorite source because not only do they have wonderful things, but they are very generous and they figure since I pay taxes, I may use their things as long as I just give them some credit. So I, I used to collect that stuff, but I don't feel like I have to collect it physically anymore. Now I collect it digitally. And that keeps me very entertained, is saving hundreds and hundreds of pictures every week. Wow, that's just amazing. Um, yeah, and the pictures of the houses and the way that you tell the stories um, – it really brings people to life. It's what, you know, some people think of history as dates and places. And I think of history as the people who lived during those times and in those places and all those relationships and experiences that they had. And I feel like that's what you bring to life in your books and in your newsletter and on your blog. So um, you said you have a bunch of people who did the block of the month. So how many... Um, how many quilts do you show in this book? I would guess 25 different ones. Sometimes just the blocks, because sometimes people didn't get them done. But I ordered, uh, I think, about 20 quilts from all the United States. I did not order any from France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I get that. Shipping. But uh, I, I have people who also make the models, because you've got to have a model. And Becky Brown is my main woman there, and she is fabulous at fussy cutting and just absolutely the perfect scenes. So she's my main source of, of help with that. But then I get also um, several other people. Mark, Mark Lauer was really nice because he was, he, uh, was kind of new to this, He's, and he hadn't you know, done much period quilting. So it was fun to watch him shop. 
and try and store all his fabric in his New York apartment. <laughs> he got pictures of that. He since moved to the house. <laughs> but but uh, I just had quite a variety of, of people who love to make the models. And just a couple weeks ago, you know, we were a little bit bored lately. Becky said, I'm really bummed. Think of something. <laughs> so we have come up with something, you know, for 2021. Because we have to plan ahead. So yeah. Becky does it. Uh, Danielle Bohannon does a few. Mar I don't know if Mark's going to get to do this one. He, he's, it's applicated. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> several other people are interested, and then we'll put it up there in January and see if it flies. Nice. Nice. It's so much fun, you know, just you know, what creates inspiration, you know, your friend saying, I'm bored, I need something to do. You're like, okay, let me find something for you to do. So yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, I love to, I love to keep Becky busy uh, because she is so good at this. At, uh, Danielle has been real helpful, but now she has five grandchildren and things aren't working out. <laughs> well, you <laughs> know. She her plans every week and she helps, but she's great at it too. So was there a particular person or story in the book that really stuck with you? Well, there, you know, each of the problem, of course, with women's history is no one tells it. And so what I love to do is poke around in somewhat famous people's lives and see first if I can find some gossip so it's not just places and dates, but also to find what happened to them later. So my favorite, I think, is uh, Theodore Roosevelt's mother. Now, people might know that Theodore Roosevelt was born right before the Civil War. He was quite rich. His father made a fortune in plate glass. Mm -hmm. And his mother was a Georgian. And so, you know what happens is you take a vacation in a nice and cool northern spot and you fall in love. So his mother actually was born in New York State, I believe. And she died in New York State, but she was an unreconstructed southerner, he said. And if you look carefully, you find that she and her mother, who lived with Theodore Roosevelt and his father, Ted, or uh, Theodore, the same name, th that these women were sending shipments of supplies to the South, which is wow. Crazy. They would send them to prisoners. Well, they were sending them mostly to prisoners of war in the North that were Southern. But they also sent stuff to their relatives by shipping it to Nassau. And they had an agent in the Bahamas who would then ship it to the sister-in-laws who didn't have needles and, and had nothing. Wow. So I love the story of, of the Roosevelts because there's someone we know. She was a mm -hmm. wonderful person. She uh, didn't eat dinner with the family, he says, through the whole Civil War because the conversation at dinner got her so angry. <laughs> Her husband from New York City was a union man, although he never joined the army because he said, I cannot, I cannot kill one of her relatives. But he was, he did his, his duty, certainly in, for the army. So she's my, one of my most fascinating people. And, and there are a couple other. One I, I like a lot was, um, let's see, Indiana, I have to think of her last name, it'll come to me. But Indiana was rich Virginian, and her dad sent her to school. Uh, in the north, mm -hmm. and then when the war came, she kept trying to get a pass to go north. I couldn't figure out what was she, why did she want to go north. Her her father had been from Vermont, but he had adapted nicely to being in rich Virginia. And then I realized that she had a boyfriend up there. And right after the war, he came down. She could never get the pass, but and and her relatives wouldn't even vouch for her. They had no idea what she was doing. But <laughs> once the war was over, they married. They had a little girl. Things were going smoothly, but the little girl died, and which is a terrible story. And they had so much money that they endowed Sweetbriar College in memory of the little girl. And that's where wow. the girl is from. It's her house. Is it is there one of the buildings? And it's her farm. And they had that only child who died. So that was their idea of after the war of of. Joining North and South there and um, making it making an endowment. So are, those are two of my favorite stories. So, how much time would you say you spend researching for a book like this? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> then we have to calculate. I, you know, I do it as a hobby. I love doing it. There's nothing more relaxing to me 
and think, oh, I better, you know, do X because somebody wants something from me. I think, oh, but what about this woman I just found yesterday who seems to seems to have made a quilt and lived in Georgia and, and you know, the Sherman's troops came through there. What if I just poked around in her graveyard and saw who else is there? And that is my idea of a good time. <laughs> okay. Very much so. So I don't keep count, but it's, you know, it's hours and hours. But it's so much easier. I used to do this in paper. In paper, I used to spend my time in libraries. Now I can find so much out. Uh, you know, through the the censuses, through the graveyards, and through books. People, you know, especially some of the more well-to-do people, they like to keep a family story. But the book is totally obscure. Yeah, yeah. That's those are really fun stories. That's. It's really amazing. I mean, as I mentioned, just loving history as much as I do. Every once in a while, you'll hear a story and you're like, you know, I never heard. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then you got to dig in and learn a little bit more. Because the families like to sort of whitewash the history. They're not going to tell you all the details. And then um, there's just, especially in the stories of the South, there has been this framework that you have to tell the story through this frame. And no one was ever, never disloyal. No one was, no one ever sat and sobbed, you know. Yeah. And in the North, it's the same kind of thing. Patriotism was the story rather than the human, the mm -hmm. human heart. Right, right. Well, I think that your story about Mrs. Roosevelt and then her family and the fact that she st shipped stuff to NASA to get it to her family, that's really what this book is about, is about those divided hearts and not being able to be together, but still be friends and support each other and love each other however they could. Yes. So. yes. And um, one of the things that we do in the book is, I, because I can trace so well, I'm pretty good at, at digital things, but I, we've had inked sentiments every month. So mm -hmm. I, I traced them and they did them in ink and some of them did wonderful kind of artwork. Many of the quilters put um, their own names in the blocks, but some of them put their ancestors and some of them um, just put someone from the book. And it, and then a couple of them, the cover, the cover quilt is quite nice. My friend Sarah Farley did that one. And she would, this was during our time when there was a lot of uncivil discussion going on. And Sarah said, we need not a civil war quilt, but just a civil quilt. And so she gave us advice on how to behave. Oh. And it's on the cover. It looks very much like a period quilt, but if you read the inking, she said, she gives you some advice about civil discourse. Um, I love that. So I, you look on the cover and then it's I will. Cover, and it says civil quilt and giant letters on the top. So mm -hmm. she was thrilled to have it on the cover and so was I. Well, and I feel like... <clears throat> you know, when there are times in the world, and even especially now, where people really disagree about what's going on politically, um, having understanding civility and understanding the importance for it and why we must remain that way no matter what, um, that's always a good message to share with people. Yes. And, you know, the Civil War is directly caused by people training a generation of South Carolinians to hate the North. And I bring mm -hmm. that up there. It, uh, if they had not been so antipathetic, possibly we could have worked out some compromises, but of course mm -hmm. that would not be. So yeah. I, try to, I try to tell positive stories too. And there's some sad stories. I tell, I think, two stories of women who were slaves before the war. But like the famous Elizabeth Keckley, who became Mary Lincoln's dressmaker, they, they rose above. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Keckley is always a favorite. I would love to have her. And have her making clothes for me, too. Yeah, I, that'd be pretty nice, wouldn't it? All right, well, thank you so much for talking to me today about your wonderful book, Divided Hearts, A Civil War Friendship Quilt. And um, I look forward to seeing what you're going to come up with next and what you're going to do for your 2021 Block of the Month and all the stories you're going to tell. So thank you so much, Barbara. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you.